Lagerstromia indica. This is our crepe myrtle. And I bet y'all have been waiting all semester for when you're gonna get crepe myrtle, cause it's a good one, easy to ID. Y'all all know it, right? Lagerstromia, we're gonna go with indica. Um, most of them are probably hybrids between indica and farii. Uh, harder to try, find a true farii, but we'll go with Lagerstromia indica. Realize a lot of them are hybrids. This is the crepe myrtle. They're in the lithrum family, lithraceae, and they're hardy zone seven to 10. It is a deciduous tree, deciduous small tree, but there are cultivars now of crepe myrtle that are all like four feet. So you can get them as tiny little dwarf shrubs now as well at about four feet tall, but we're used to seeing them as this tree form. Uh, they can be multi-trunk or single trunk. These multi-trunk ones are so pretty, but you may see it as a single standard trunk and they're pretty as well. So you'll see multi-trunk or standards, single trunk. Uh, small tree, again, can be a dwarf shrub, but we think of it as a tree between about 10 to 20 feet tall. Uh, deciduous, so loses its leaves in the winter. We have our nice new leaves coming out in the spring. A few things to notice for ID, and a lot of times you'll see tiny little seedlings coming up all around them, and the new stem on the seedlings and on the stem here is often red. You'll see a reddish color to the new stem, and it's square. So you have a square new stem. Now the leaf arrangement is actually opposite, but it's opposite and sub-opposite. We do that just to confuse you, right? So, <laughs> some of the leaves are true opposite. Some of the leaves, it looks a little cattywampus, like they're not quite alternate, not quite opposite. Look a tiny bit alternate, it's sub-opposite. They're connected on the inside, but on the outside, it looks a little wop-sided or cockeyed. So, opposite and sub-opposite for the leaves. Reddish coloration a lot of times to the stem on the new growth. Oftentimes you'll even have reddish around the margin or a reddish coloration to the leaf on the new growth as well. When it leaves all the way out, it's just gonna be rounded as far as the shape of the foliage, kind of rounded to elliptic. Uh, then, everybody loves it for the flower and this gives us one of us, our longest flower times. It starts usually about May for us. It'll go May, June, July, August, all the way into the fall. You get those really large terminal panicles of flower. They're like little tiny delicate and they kind of float around in the air, kind of like crepe paper. I don't know if that's where they get the crepe myrtle name, I'm guessing, but it looks like a little crepe papery, huge terminal panicles. Uh, they can be pink, reddish pink, like a watermelon, lavender or white, so pink, lavender, white to red on your colors of your panicles. And again, hugely long bloom time, June, July, August, or May, June, July, August, even into September. And then you'll get the little seed heads where you saw the panicles, you'll just see little seed heads, not real significant on the fruit. What it does get is a great fall color. You get a gorgeous red fall color off the crepe myrtles. And one of the classic crepe myrtle characteristics is this beautiful smooth bark. You have this smooth bark. Now the farii has more of an exfoliating bark. The indica is more smooth. So depending on the hybrid or which species it is, the, it can ha have actual huge shavings peeling off the bark, or sometimes it's just smooth. So it can be smooth to exfoliating or completely exfoliating. It, it kind of depends on the hybrid. And it can be more of a tan or more of a cinnamon color. The cinnamon color comes from the farii as well. So you'll see kind of a tan bark or a cinnamon color bark, smooth to exfoliating, but gorgeous on the bark. And y'all all know about the nightmarish pruning people do on crepe myrtles. They call it crepe murder. And they take them back to the same stump every year and makes these big giant round knobs and they look horrible. Guess what? There are crepe myrtles four feet tall, 10 feet tall, 12 feet tall, 15 feet tall, 20 feet. Get the cultivar that is the size you want and don't murder them every single spring, right? So no crepe murder. Get the right cultivar. The other thing that's important about cultivars besides size, powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is an issue on crepe myrtles. Get a USDA selection for powdery mildew resistance. That's the way to go. Very heat and drought tolerant. As you all know, this is one of the most popular landscape trees in the south. Uh, full sun is best. The further into the shade, the less flower and the more powdery mildew. So full sun, heat and drought tolerant. We always see them in these huge groupings. You can use them as specimens as well. But one of our favorite deciduous small trees for the south. 
lagerstromia indica crepe myrtle.